I have no idea where it went. Oh, maybe it's on a different page. This is good stuff. Everybody, you should check out ericandgord.com like I am. It's like a new learning thing every day. Because <laughs> you gotta, you got to understand, when I'm building the website, I don't actually see the website, right? I, I see a weird computer thing full of jargon. That, and then that, that jargon makes a web page when you go to ericandgord.com. But I don't go to ericandgord.com. Um, so I never know what it's going to look like when I finally do. Every day is an adventure. That certainly is. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, did you get your newsletter? I did. I haven't opened it yet, but I did get it. Oh, okay, good. I sent them out. To, uh... Scout knives. Yeah, it, the link's on there. Oh, how come it's not on mine? Uh, thank you, everybody, for who requested the newsletter and who subscribed to it. That uh, helps us look really good, and hopefully it's somewhat informative to you guys of what the uh, Champion Tree Entertainment Company is up to. Uh, not a lot about uh, Eric and Gord in this issue because... You hear us every day. I don't, and all we talk about is what we do or what we've done or what we're gonna do. So I didn't think I needed to put out a whole bunch of it to to us. Um, but I thought you might want to know what our production company is doing. Otherwise, um, so there you go. And then you can expect the next one next month. Uh, it's very cool that people actually signed up for that thing. Um, yeah. So hopefully I'll have next the uh, July issue out um, a little bit quicker than this one. Sorry, there's a very loud Chinese lady interrupting me. Yes, there is. <clears throat> I don't know. If oh, I remembered now. Oh. <laughs> I remember what I was going to ask you. <laughs> That's what I needed. I needed the Chinese reference. <laughs> um, so, okay, so we all know that um, uh, Dire Straits in their song um, um, Money for Nothing, they had to delete that whole verse um, that was, I said, that uh, that little faggot got his own dear airplane. That little faggot, he's a millionaire. They had to get rid of that because of the word faggot. Right. Now, I was on my way into work this morning. I'm flipping through the radio, and I end up stopping on the radio station because they were playing fucking um, um, uh, Born, in the, uh, Born in the USA by Bruce Springsteen. It's a great And song. I'm listening. One of the best songs ever. Right. And it's it's an awesome tune. But I realized that in that song, because he actually uses the line about talking about uh, being sent out to the Vietnam War and to shoot to shoot, to shoot the yellow man. Yeah. And I was wondering, how come nobody has turned around and cl- claimed that as being racist yet? Oh, I'm sure they would, except for the fact that it's killed them. And that's a good thing as far as racists are concerned. And they're probably stoked about that line. Well, no, I understand that the racists are fine with it, but I'm talking about like the the, the more liberal side. Um, how can you how can you allow this big symbolism of U.S. be about killing a guy that they actually use the term of the yellow man? Well, I think because American liberal or, or otherwise, you want to kill some yellow people in your lifetime. That's just American <laughs> taste. Um, they love that shit. <laughs> they, they eat that shit like American pie. <laughs> they, they really do. Like the liberals, just they just don't want to kill the ones that the conservatives want to kill. They can't agree on who to kill, but they all want to kill some. <laughs> so the yellow man gets to stay. That's fine. I would think so. Just if it was like a um, be friend to your yellow man and don't make fun of his driving, then they'd want it out right away. They'd be like, <laughs> "That's racist." <laughs> but just saying you want to kill the yellow man, that's 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 more than fine. Uh, eh, who doesn't? I don't. I'm not saying I do. I'm just, just Americans do. No, I don't know why. Maybe they, they just let that one slip. I don't know. The boss gets away with stuff. That's why he's the boss. That's, that's, I guess that's true. Yeah, it's <laughs> one of those random weird things. I just I heard it and I just saw it. Cause like, not that I want to see that happen because I, I'm completely against this whole overt racism thing that everything's considered racist. But... Okay. That doesn't um, bring up the uh, horrible idea of censoring songs like that. I mean, we start cutting and a whole lot of good music go bye bye. Yeah, and that's just it, and that's what that's just it has to stop because you know if you don't dire like straits. it, you just stop um, listening to it. Feel free to fuck with Dire Straits all you want. I'm cool with that. No, like, you know what though? But I have a problem with that because do you, do you know what that was written about? Who I should yes, say yeah, I do actually. I know I'm, I'm I'm actually very familiar with it only because of the controversy that surrounded it. I looked into it, so yeah, it's it's about Nikki Six from Motley Crue. Yeah, which is uh, hilarious on its own front, but I mean, you're calling a guy like again proof that you're 
that the term faggot has nothing to do with gay. Because there's nothing gay about Nikki Six. That guy has fucked more fucking women than Ron Jeremy, for God's sakes. You know. Yeah, like, that's probably uh, because he's so gay. Yeah, well, of course. You know, that's <laughs> why. Yeah, of course. That's I'll, just I'll, I'll, sense. a lot of ridiculously gay men sleep with a lot of women to make to cover it up. Yeah, but uh, yeah, no. The guys of Motley Crue, you cannot call them gay. It, that's just no. <laughs> uh, you, you can't do it. Um, <laughs> you, you can't. No, I really no. tried to keep that up as long as I could. No, uh, this is impossible to say with a straight face. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that is really funny. Uh, no, oh. but every time you have a problem with a song, uh, take it out on Dire Straits. I'm cool with that. <laughs> Whoever the band is, just blame Dire Straits and wreck one of their songs. Don't don't bug real bands. <laughs> Oh, you know, made a dire straits? Uh, that's, um, that's heart wrenching. I think they're pretty overrated. Um, I know oh. I'm not in a majority, but his guitar playing is just yeah, yeah, fucking yeah. beyond phenomenal. I know, that's what everybody seems to think. Well, because it's true. It's so true. That guy is highly fucking skilled musician, and his his repertoire of of styles that he can play is incredible. Um. He did a thing with uh, Chet Atkins, um, and for those that don't know, Chet Atkins is a, is an old time um, uh, guitar player who's got a very unique sort of style to him, and it's really really good. And credited as being one of the greatest guitar players of all time. And yeah, with yeah. Um, and Mark Knopfler did a special with him uh, with a bunch of other people, but Mark Knopfler specifically was one of the big highlights of it. Did he make him put a silent P in his name? Quite possibly. <laughs> not fuller <laughs> well yeah just a uh, really good and that just fucking reminded me hang on actually that just reminded me I gotta make sure I fucking download his uh, discography Chet Atkins <laughs> oh I thought you were gonna say Mark not fuller no I already has his <laughs> I don't maybe that's why I'm not I've never improved at guitar playing I just plateaued when I was like 11 it's probably because I don't give any of these guys credit at all they're all phenomenal I just don't give them credit uh, I, I've always been like that. Even since a little kid, I was just like, I'm just as good as you. Really? Show me. No, I don't have to. I know. You want to know one band you should check out, Eric? Uh, I think you might get a kick out of. I don't know if you've ever heard of them. It's a band called X Japan. Uh, I have heard of them. Why do I know them? They are, well, they are from Japan. And uh, they are like um like a traditional they're, they're almost like a dragon force sort of band like they're uh they're, they're hair metal they've got the most ridiculous their hair do you remember um the lead singer from fucking the band nitro where he had this oh, tiny little fucking head he had this massive like eight foot fucking mane of white hair that is fucking extra pan but all of them very cool i love yeah, when japanese really people try to actually do things like that like metal. Next up, it was huge. Like they were massive, huge. Like really, really fucking, really big. How do I not and, know them? Um, oh, I know them, but I don't know. No, no. <laughs> I'll check them out. That's a good idea. I need something yeah. to listen to. I'm bored lately. Yeah, there you go. There's, there's one you can check out. <laughs> That's very good. Oh, too good. And by the way, uh, we we've talked about this other band, uh, the Baby Metal. Yes. Okay. Um. I I got their discography and uh, I was I was I was listening to some of it the other day. They have a song. Um. I bet they have more than one. They do. They do have more than one. But this one in particular, holy shit, is it heavy? Like, like straight up death metal, fucking heavy. And even vocally, they uh, it's got like some. They have. They must have some. Uh, I guess vocalists doing the vocals on because it's just a, this gnarly fucking rah, 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 sort of vocal line to it and it's I'm just I'm listening to him like is this really baby metal because where's the three little cute chicks you know like what the hell <laughs> you know we'll have to check Crazy. that out yeah I'm a, gonna, I am I have to admit I am a fan of them so we're going to have to do a metal episode pretty soon um oh so. yeah I have a friend uh, named Eric who does a blog all about new metal, and he's constantly bombarding me with way too much information. Um, so I just have to get him on the show, and that way I can record him and remember half of what he tells me. 
He's just yeah. an, he's an encyclopedia of metal. He's really actually really interesting to talk to, but um, he's very uh, frantic about it. Like as if he, if he, if he doesn't tell you within thirty seconds everything new that's come out in the last ten years, he's going to blow up, and you <laughs> absorb about like half of it if you're lucky. Now, for anybody who wants to know about metal and its history and its different different genres. Uh, the most interactive, greatest website in the world is called mapofmetal.com. It is the coolest fucking thing. It's literally just a giant map of the world, and it's got every single subgenre of metal that exists. Really? You think there's like five? No, there's like fucking 50. Yeah, there's way too many. Yeah, it's insane. And they have, what it does is they, it gives you, it tells you what the genre's name is, gives you a breakdown of what it is, uh, where it came from, and then it has a listing of like 10 bands and songs that is of that type of genre of music. And the wow. cool thing is Black Sabbath is in about a third of them. Oh, really? Yeah, because you got Black Sabbath. They have a song that fits under sludge metal. They got stoner rock. They got, you know, all these different little variations of what you hear that one song, and then you hear these, these bands that have written whole albums that sound like that one Sabbath tune, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah, of course. And you have to, like, anything from Sweden uh, that looks like they're actually killing people on stage, they probably are skip it. Yeah. Very it is, yeah. scary, uh, insane stuff they do. And, they're, and um, they're, the thing is, is, Swedish death metal is hilarious because, like, even the, um, the what do they have, a prime minister, a president, a dictator, whatever the fuck he is out there, even he has, like, when um, during his, uh, I think it's like part of his uh, inauguration or something like that, he actually got a fucking black metal Swiss black metal band to play. Oh yeah, well yeah, like they, like they the people legit actually fucking like it. Oh definitely, yeah. But there's crazy like they have been like people killed on stage and stuff. Uh, and they, they were, got the guys that burn churches. Yeah, like they like, they take it a little far. <laughs> they're the real fucking deal. Like you I mean you got these guys that come out with the painted faces doing this black metal but yeah no these are the guys that you're going to sit back afterwards and have them like laughing and drinking a fucking Mai Tai and smiles no, the sweetest death metal they they're legit Yeah, this <laughs> they not... are angry face painted motherfuckers that just want to see the world burn they are guys that Lars Ulrich does not talk to mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. he's, he's a useless waste of just my god I don't know how he no one in Metallica ever noticed that he can't play drums. That blows my mind. <laughs> well, it's because he doesn't stop talking. He's great for interviews. That's why. Yeah, I guess so. He's, and he was, you know, it's it, being called the handsome one in Metallica. It's not, not really <laughs> something to write home about. But uh, <laughs> That's like being called the best looking Ramon. I mean, come on. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I still remember fucking uh, Radiohead uh, when they when they came out with their first major hit, um, Creep. Uh, there's that one still shot where it's just a still shot of Tom York's fucking face, and it's just it, it looks like a Picasso painting. <laughs> yeah, it really does. <laughs> he's, he's got that fucking Forrest Whitaker thing where one eye is bigger than the other, and you know it's. Mouth is slanted. Yeah, it's just fucking weird looking. <laughs> That's a great band name. I'm going to write that down. That Forrest Whitaker thing. That could be my new band name. <laughs> Not a bad idea. Have you heard the new song by that Forrest Whitaker thing? What do you mean? Like the huge eye? No, that's the name of the band. That's the name of the band. You haven't heard them? Oh my God, they're amazing. It's got a weird eye thing. Yeah, my kick off band. That, that's mean. <laughs> It's fucking funny is what it is. I actually went to school with a guy, and he may be one of our fans, actually. He could be listening to us, but we named a band after him, and I was in a band very briefly called Thomas Olson's Wandering Eye. <laughs> um, Tom Olson, if you're out there listening, it was a great band, and you're a great guy. <laughs> I appreciate your wandering fucking eye for it. It was great. <laughs> Forrest Whitaker thing. I love that. Actually, I will call the band that Forrest Whitaker thing. And our first album will be a tribute to Thomas Olsen's Wandering Eye. How about that? Nice. Why and not? I, tomorrow morning, I'll go to Hakeem Optical for uh, some funding for this. <laughs> <laughs> Do a little cross-promoting there, I think. Hakeem. <laughs> Those guys just blew up like Starbucks. I don't get it. 
Yeah, I also don't quite understand it. It's a very strange. Uh, yeah, I, I don't get it. Let's 